A journey through all our national parks is pretty much out of the question right now. Allow Connor Knighton to suggest a plan B. April is typically one of the busiest months of the year at Joshua Tree National Park. Not this April. On April 1st, Joshua Tree closed to the public as national parks all across the country have shut their gates. Basically, we could not guarantee that the people inside the park were going to be safe because they kept on congregating in such large numbers. David Smith is the superintendent at Joshua Tree, a park that's nearly 800,000 acres. But as we've been seeing at parks across the country, people still want to hike the popular trails. This was the scene at now closed Zion National Park just a few weeks ago. In addition, many of our most spectacular parks are near some of our most vulnerable towns. It's a 17-bed hospital um, with uh, zero ICU rooms. Braden Bradford is the director of the Southeast Utah Health Department. He pleaded with the Park Service to please close Canyonlands and Arches so that visitors wouldn't overwhelm Moab Small Hospital. We love you all, but now is, is not the time. Taking that road trip to enjoy America's best idea just isn't the best idea right now. Four years ago, I took the mother of all road trips. I visited every national park in the country. But while I was out there on the trail, I discovered there are a surprising number of ways you can enjoy the great outdoors indoors. When I visited Colorado's Great Sand Dunes National Park, measured to be one of the quietest places in the entire country, the two things that affect sound levels. Scientist Kurt Fristrup mentioned that his team had also been collecting some of their favorite noises. We try to capture a greatest hits, sort of albums of all the unusual or particularly significant or interesting sounds that we get in parks. Go to nps.gov sound and you can hear some of those greatest hits. You can listen to a coyote giving chase. thunderstorm at Big Bend, or just queue up the curated Park Tracks mix when you need to calm down in between conference calls. When I visited Alaska's Kenai Fjords National Park, I hung out with Ranger Fiona North. And now you can do the same thing. Thanks to Google's Arts and Culture Project, you can follow Ranger North deep down into a glacial crevasse. But very few people get to come up here and walk out onto the ice. Now is also the perfect time to delve in to the fascinating histories of our parks. For example, if COVID-19 had occurred back in 1919, a doctor would have most likely recommended treating the virus with a bath down in Arkansas. Online, you can read about how the water at Hot Springs National Park was once thought to cure everything from rheumatism to syphilis. At several of the parks, including Joshua Tree, rangers like Sarah Jane Pepper are offering Skype field trips for students. It's spines aren't hard and woody yet. I can pet it. It's really soft. <laughs> Our parks are giant classrooms. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and come visit us for real someday once the park gets opened again. Sometimes it can be comforting just to be reminded that these places are still out there. That's why so many of our Sunday morning moments of nature come from the national parks. My new book, Leave Only Footprints, is about the powerful impact the parks had on my own life. While writing it, I frequently found inspiration in the words of writer John Muir, who argued that wildness is a necessity. Going to the mountains is going home. For now, I am staying parked inside, like we all should be. But when this is all passed, I can't tell you how excited I'm going to be to get out of the house and head home.